sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Brothers and sisters, today we are going to explore the dangers of pride and how it is used as a weapon by the enemy, specifically to target men and women, leading them into destruction. Pride is one of the most powerful emotions, deeply rooted in the heart, and it is one of the most effective tools in the hands of Satan. We will dive deep into the scripture and understand how pride played a crucial role in the fall of man, starting with the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Through God's word, we will learn how the serpent, the devil, craftily uses pride, especially against women, to bring men down, ultimately seeking to destroy all of God's creation. Let us begin by anchoring this message in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. This verse gives us clear insight into the devastating consequences of pride. Pride always leads to destruction, and we will see how the enemy uses this destructive force to tear down individuals, relationships, and families. But before we continue, let's open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today asking for wisdom and understanding as we explore the dangers of pride. Open our hearts to your word and help us see how the enemy works to deceive us. Give us the humility to recognize pride in our own hearts and the strength to resist it through your power. Lead us, Lord, in the paths of righteousness that we may walk humbly before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our journey begins in the Garden of Eden, a place of perfection and peace, where Adam and Eve lived in harmony with God. But lurking in the shadows was the serpent, the most intelligent, crafty, and subtle creation that God had made. Genesis 3.1 introduces us to this creature. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Here we see the serpent's cunning nature. He doesn't come with an obvious lie. Instead, he begins with a question, planting the seed of doubt in Eve's heart. The serpent knew that Eve's weakness wasn't in her strength, but in her pride. The serpent, Satan, is fully aware of how powerful pride can be. And he targeted Eve specifically because he knew that if he could take her down, Adam would soon follow. Genesis 3, 4-5 continues, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In this moment, the serpent appeals directly to Eve's pride. He suggests that God is withholding something from her, that she could be like God. This is the core of pride the desire to elevate oneself above the place that God has ordained, the craving for power, and the rejection of God's authority. The serpent used Eve's pride against her, knowing that she would be enticed by the idea of becoming like God. Pride blinds us to the truth and makes us susceptible to deception. When we allow pride to take root in our hearts, we become vulnerable to the enemy's lies. In Eve's case, her pride led her to doubt God's goodness and his word. The serpent was successful in manipulating her emotions and the result was catastrophic. Satan is very strategic in his attacks and pride is one of his most effective weapons, particularly against women. The serpent targeted Eve, knowing that if he could cause her to fall, Adam would soon follow. This is a tactic we see repeated throughout history and even in our modern day lives. Pride often manifests in subtle ways through vanity, self-importance, or the desire for control. And the enemy uses it to undermine women's role in God's design. Women, as nurturers and caretakers, 
hold a unique position of influence. Satan understands this, and he uses pride to manipulate their emotions and cause division. When a woman succumbs to pride, it often leads to rebellion against God's established order in relationships and families. In Eve's case, her pride led her to act independently of Adam, making a decision without his guidance or input, which led to devastating consequences for both of them. This pattern of pride leading women into rebellion is something that Satan continues to exploit today. We see it in the breakdown of families, in the rejection of God's design for relationships, and in the cultural push for women to prioritize their own desires above all else. When women allow pride to take root, it disrupts the order that God has established and leads to chaos. In 1 Timothy 2.14, we are reminded of Eve's deception. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. This verse highlights the fact that Eve was deceived first. Her pride made her vulnerable to the serpent's lies, and as a result, she transgressed against God's command. But the devil didn't stop with Eve. His ultimate goal was to bring down both Adam and Eve to destroy the perfect relationship they had with God. Once Eve had fallen, it was only a matter of time before Adam followed. Genesis 3, 6 tells us, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Here we see the devastating ripple effect of pride. Eve's pride led her to disobey God, and in turn she led Adam into the same disobedience. This is a crucial point for us to understand. When a woman is led astray by pride, it often results in the man following her into the same sin. Adam, though not deceived by the serpent, still chose to follow Eve's lead, and both of them fell into sin. Satan's goal is not just to bring down women, he wants to destroy men as well. He knows that if he can get to the woman first, the man will often follow, and the family unit will be shattered. 1 Corinthians 11.3 lays out the order God has established. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. When this divine order is disrupted, it opens the door for the enemy to bring destruction. Adam, as the head of the relationship, was meant to protect and guide Eve, but instead he allowed her pride to lead him into sin. This pattern of men following women into disobedience is something we see repeated throughout history, and it is always rooted in pride. When pride takes hold in a woman's heart, it not only affects her, but it also affects the man in her life. Pride leads to rebellion, and rebellion leads to destruction. Proverbs 16:18 reminds us of this truth. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. This verse applies to both men and women. When pride is allowed to flourish, it brings destruction to individuals, relationships, and families. Satan uses pride to blind us to the truth, and once we are blinded, it becomes easy for him to lead us into destruction. The enemy's ultimate goal is to destroy everything that God has created. He hates humanity because we are made in the image of God, and he will stop at nothing to bring about our downfall. Pride is one of his most effective tools because it directly attacks our relationship with God. When we are filled with pride, we elevate ourselves above God, and we reject his authority in our lives. Pride was the sin that caused Satan's own fall from grace. Isaiah 14, 12, 14 describes the pride that led to Satan's rebellion against God. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan's pride led him to believe that he could be equal to God. And this same pride is what he uses to deceive us. 
He whispers the same lies to us that he whispered to Eve. You can be like God. You don't need to submit to his authority. You can do it your way. These lies are seductive and they appeal to our prideful nature, but in the end, they lead to destruction. The devil wants to destroy us because we are God's creation. He targets both men and women, using pride to drive a wedge between us and God. When we are consumed by pride, we become spiritually blind and we no longer see the danger we are in. This is why Proverbs 16:18 is such an important warning. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. The enemy uses pride to destroy relationships, families, and even entire nations. Pride leads to rebellion, and rebellion leads to destruction. It is a cycle that the enemy has used since the beginning of time, and it continues to be one of his most effective strategies. The good news is that we do not have to be victims of the enemy's schemes. Through Christ, we have the power to overcome pride and walk in humility. The Bible gives us clear instructions on how to guard our hearts against pride and submit ourselves to God's authority. In James chapter 4, verse 6 to 7 says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Humility is the antidote to pride. When we humble ourselves before God and submit to his authority, we disarm the enemy's attacks. Pride is rooted in self-reliance, but humility acknowledges our dependence on God. When we recognize that we are nothing without him, we begin to walk in the freedom and peace that comes from trusting in his wisdom and guidance. One of the most important ways we can guard against pride is through constant prayer and seeking God's will in our lives. Proverbs chapter three, verse five to six instructs us, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. When we rely on our own understanding, we open the door to pride. But when we trust in the Lord and seek his direction, we are protected from the enemy's deception. Pride is a subtle sin that often goes unnoticed until it's too late. But through prayer and humility, we can keep our hearts aligned with God's will. The Jezebel spirit is a destructive and manipulative force, one that thrives on pride and rebellion. It seeks to control, silence, and destroy those who are called by God. The enemy, Satan, loves to use this spirit to silence the elect and the prophets of God, often working through women who have fallen into pride just as Eve did in the garden. Jezebel was a queen known for her wickedness and rebellion against God's prophets. She manipulated, deceived, and used her influence to lead God's people away from the truth. 1 Kings 21:25 KJV describes her influence on her husband, Ahab, but there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. Jezebel stirred up Ahab's wickedness, leading him into greater sin. This is the same spirit that seeks to target men of God today, often using pride and the manipulation of emotions. Satan loves to use the Jezebel spirit to silence men who are called by God, especially when these men are prophets or leaders in the faith. Jezebel's goal is to undermine and destroy their calling by using pride, manipulation, and rebellion against God's authority. This spirit often works through the emotions of women who, like Eve, may be deceived into thinking that their own desires and prideful ambitions are more important than submission to God's order. Genesis 3.6 describes how Eve's pride led her to disobey God's command. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Eve's pride, sparked by the serpent's deception, led her to believe that she could be like God. In her pride, she acted independently, 
disobeying God's direct command, and then influenced Adam to do the same. This pattern of pride leading to rebellion is exactly how the Jezebel spirit operates, especially in relationships. When women fall into pride, they often become tools the enemy uses to target men of God, leading them astray and silencing their prophetic voice. Satan's strategy has always involved targeting women to get to men. In the Garden of Eden, the serpent went after Eve, knowing that if he could deceive her, Adam would soon follow. Satan used Eve's pride as a tool to disrupt God's order and to cause the fall of both her and Adam. Today, the enemy continues to use the same tactic through the spirit of Jezebel, which operates by exploiting pride, rebellion, and manipulation. This spirit is especially dangerous because it seeks to undermine the authority of God's word and silence the men who are called to be spiritual leaders. The Jezebel spirit thrives on rebellion against God's order and it often manifests in relationships where pride has taken root. The enemy uses this spirit to cause division, strife, and confusion, targeting men of God through the women in their lives it is crucial to understand that Satan's goal is to destroy the calling and mission of the men and women of God. He knows that if he can get to the woman through pride, he can often take down the man as well. This is why Proverbs 16:18 warns us, pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. Pride is the open door that allows the Jezebel spirit to enter and wreak havoc in relationships churches and ministries. When men of God are targeted by this spirit, it often leads to their downfall, as they become entangled in prideful rebellion against God's order. The enemy uses pride to destroy families, ministries, and the prophetic voice of God's chosen people. As believers, we must be vigilant in guarding our hearts against pride. When pride takes root, it opens the door for the Jezebel spirit to manipulate and control us. The key to resisting the spirit is humility and submission to God. James 4, 6, 7 gives us clear instruction on how to overcome pride and resist the enemy. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Humility is the antidote to pride and submission to God is the key to overcoming the Jezebel spirit. When we submit ourselves to God's authority and walk in humility, we disarm the enemy's tactics. We must recognize that pride is a tool the enemy uses to destroy both men and women, and we must be diligent in keeping our hearts humble before the Lord. Just as the serpent used Eve to bring down Adam, Satan will continue to use pride to target men and women today but through Christ, we have the power to resist these attacks. 1 Peter 5, 6, 8, KJV, reminds us to remain sober and vigilant. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, the enemy is always seeking opportunities to devour God's people, and pride is one of the easiest ways for him to do so. But by walking in humility and submitting to God's will, we can resist the attacks of the Jezebel spirit and stand firm in our calling. I want to encourage each of you to examine your hearts and ask God to reveal any areas of pride that may be lurking there. Pride is a deadly sin, and it leads to destruction but through Christ, we can overcome it. Let us follow the example of Jesus, who humbled himself and became obedient to the will of the Father. Philippians 2, 5, 8 reminds us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Christ is our perfect example of humility, and through him we have the strength to resist the enemy's attacks. 
let us commit ourselves to walking in humility and submission to God's will, knowing that pride leads to destruction, but humility leads to life. Let us close in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word and the truth that you have revealed to us today. Help us to guard our hearts against pride and to walk in humility before you. We ask for your guidance and wisdom in every area of our lives, and we submit ourselves to your authority. Protect us from the enemy's schemes and lead us on the path of righteousness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. We are excited to announce that Bible Adventures for Children is coming soon. This new series is designed to help children learn about the teachings of the Bible in a fun and engaging way. Some of the artistic artwork seen in this video will also be featured in the cartoon series. Please stay tuned for the release to help children because as you know the dark forces are targeting our children and they are the future of our world and of utmost importance to Jesus Christ. We now extend an invitation to you, not merely to support our ministry, but to become an integral part of our divine mission and purpose. Visit our website at awakeningrighteousness.com where you will discover a free blog, Christian canvas art, and a vast range of Christian books that delve even deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. Each book serves as a beacon, illuminating the path to awaken the righteous version of yourself. By standing with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to truly understand the teachings of the Bible and ignite faith in many hearts. You have the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. God be with you. Amen. Thank you.